Hello, this is Stephen Withrow with Webucator. In this video, I'm going to show you a solution Philip Hauer came up with for checked exceptions are evil. Philip agreed to let us create this video showing his solution, which is available as an article here on his blog at the URL shown here. Checked exceptions must be caught or thrown in a method. Philip points out that these checked exceptions are evil and he has some very good reasons for backing up his claim. Consider the following snippet. The read all lines method in the files class potentially can generate an IO exception. IO exception must be handled. In other words, it's a checked exception. What exactly though are we going to do with this exception? We could rethrow the exception by putting the throws clause on the method signature. This will pass the exception to the method that called the current method. Philip indicates that we might have several methods in the stack and each method is forced to have the throws IO exception coded on the method signature. If we want to add a new exception, well, we have to modify each of the method signatures. Not only that, but if the user repository is an interface, then various implementations might throw different exceptions. A database implementation, for example, might throw an SQL exception. Therefore, on the throws clause, we would have to code IO exception, comma, SQL exception, even if our intention was not to use the file system at all. We could handle the exception, but what are we going to do with an I.O. exception? We really can't recover from that. In other words, as Philip points out, we cannot heal that particular issue. There are other issues as well. We might code a boilerplate try catch and not include any code in the catch at the current time, thinking later on we will add code. If we don't add code, then the exception is swallowed, as Philip points out. And again, we don't really know what code to put together to handle an I.O. exception. The solution, use unchecked exceptions and wrap the checked exception. An unchecked exception extends the runtime class. For example, null pointer exception, arithmetic exception, array index out of bounds, these all extend runtime exception and are unchecked exceptions. Philip proposes a repository exception which extends runtime exception. Therefore, in our method, get content, if the IO exception occurs, we will catch it and we will rethrow that as a repository exception. The calling method is not obligated to handle repository exception. It may elect to do so, but it does not have to. And then the repository exception would be passed up the call stack without requiring any throws clause on the methods. In summary, Philip indicates that we should use unchecked exceptions. He also poses a question. What do water wings and checked exceptions have in common? At the beginning, you feel safer with them, but later they prevent you from swimming quickly. Good observation. I have reproduced Philip's code on my computer, and I have made some minor changes to it. I have the get all lines method. Notice that right now I have a throws IO exception on the get all lines method. This is required because the read all lines method in the files class could generate an IO exception. And as indicated in Philip's blog, this is a checked exception and we must handle it or throws it. Notice also I have to code the throws on the main method as well. I will now compile the code and the code compiles fine. We can run the program as well, just to make sure it runs, and it runs fine, producing the lines of my file. What happens if I remove the throws clause from the main method? I will do that right now. I will save my change. 
I'm going to compile the code and notice we have an error as Philip predicted. The get all lines method potentially can throw the checked exception IO exception and I must catch it or I have to put the throws clause on the method signature. If I remove the throws from the get all lines method, now the error occurs on line 20 where the read all lines method is invoked in the get all lines method that I have coded. I'm going to remove the throws on the main method so now the throws has been omitted from the main method and get all lines. I will uncomment the code I've already put in place that reflects the approach that Philip recommends. Notice I also have the repository exception coded in this source file as well. I'm going to compile with my new unchecked exception and the compile is successful. Let's run the code just to make sure it still runs correctly and it does. Therefore success. We have used Philip's suggestion and we are not required to code the throws on our method signatures. We are not required to catch the exception in the main method. Thanks again to Philip for the inspiration for this video. Check out his blog at the URL shown here for other articles related to web development and Java programming.